Hey guys, welcome to Layer Lab. This is a follow-up video from my last one where I ended up replacing the stock standard PTFE tubing that came with the Sunlu filament connector with some silicone tubing, which is meant to make the whole process of welding your filament together easier. However, I did get quite a lot of questions about the whole process, so I figured I'd just make a video to hopefully answer them all. So the first one was that people were concerned about the inner diameter of the new tubing. Now the inner diameter of this silicone tubing is a little bit smaller than the one you'll find on the PTFE. But this actually works to its advantage because it keeps everything nice and snug when you're going through the whole process. Now people are worried that it's too tight, but I'm gonna thread some in here for you to see. You can see that it goes through quite well. Now it is tight, so it's not gonna move easily, which means you will have to cut this off if you are gonna be connecting two spools together. You can't just let it sit loosely because it's not gonna sit loose. But it is a little bit tighter in comparison to the original PTFE tubing, where it just slides freely like this. Now you think that because of the inner diameter, the silicone is 1.6 and the filament itself is 1.75, that it's not gonna come out right. But because of some type of thermal physics or dynamics or something way above my pay grade, it seems to come out looking pretty nice. And when you put it through an extruder, whether it be a Bowdoin style setup or a direct drive, I haven't had any problems with it. So when we get our calipers here, we can see what it has gone into. And that's pretty much bang on, 175. Now another question people had was regarding the filament still being too hot when you took it out of the filament connector and then it just comes apart and it's an oozy mess. They said, why don't you just leave it in there and let it dry naturally, remove the power, turn it off and come back when it's a bit cooler. But I'll show you the problem with that. Now I have turned this up to 195. I figured that putting a little bit more heat onto the connection would help because this tube is a little bit thicker. So if you are having issues, then I'd recommend setting this up about 10 degrees to 195. So now I'm gonna show you what it's gonna look like if we just leave it inside the unit without taking it out and try and let it cool naturally. I'm gonna leave this for uh, maybe let's say two minutes and I'll be back in a memento. Okay, so it's been about two minutes. Let's have a look at what we got. And this is the result of that. You can see that this middle part has been clamped a little too much. And these sides are also melting and deforming. And it's creating a bulge on either side of the plastic. And that's because the residual heat is just melting and melting and melting and it's forcing it together. And it's creating this uneven connection. And this is not gonna work. Okay, so now I'm gonna try a different technique of using this filament holder here and see if we can just leave it in that way and let it dry naturally. And you can see there are two bends here which could make our life painful when it's going through the extruder. So that's why you really need to just take it out straight away because otherwise it's not going to dry in the correct shape. Take it out slowly and hold it nice and straight. And because of the thickness of this silicone tubing, it means that it doesn't bend straight down the middle like it does with the PTFE stuff. I find that pressing it down around with your fingers actually cools it off a bit more and makes that connection nice and strong. And then when we remove it, there it is. Perfect connection. It looks amazing. Now I did get a comment of someone saying that the tube is too large for the filament and it slides around easily. But if that's the case, you've either been sent the wrong size or you've bought the wrong size because there are a couple of different ones to choose from. When the silicone tube is on, it should have a fair bit of friction on it and it shouldn't move around easily. It, shouldn't be, it definitely shouldn't be loose and it shouldn't have any gaps at all. Now when you're doing this, I would recommend using a pair of scissors as opposed to the typical filament cutter that you get with most machines. Uh, and I'll show you why. So when you use the filament cutter, it kind of squishes in the ends and it leaves a kind of arrowhead type of look to it. Uh, and now I'll show you what it looks like with 
the scissors. And the blue one has been cut by scissors and you can see that it is perfectly straight. So when you're doing this, I'd recommend doing a straight cut with scissors. Don't worry about putting it on an angle or any of that stuff. It's too hard to line it up and is too painful to do. So if you just do two flat straight cuts with a pair of scissors, this is going to make your life a whole bunch easier. So someone said that it's quite difficult to keep the lid closed on this, which is true to a degree. Um, it does take a little bit of finesse. But just as long as it's perfectly in these grooves here, then it should close. If it's not in these grooves, then you're gonna have issues. So put it in the groove and then close it and it should stay closed. Now someone said, why don't you just use a longer piece? Maybe that'll make it easier. So let's try that. So now we have a very long piece. I'm just gonna shove that in, close it up. But as you can see, the longer piece is just too big and it puts too much pressure on this top lid. So you're really gonna have to go with as small of a piece as possible. I'd recommend something about this size. I'd say around 22 millimeters. Anything longer than that, then you're gonna have issues with this top lid popping open. So you see that the filament is going to wanna to bend naturally the way that the spools are facing. So it's good to have them both the same orientation so they bend in the same way and then you're going to want to face this bend downward so it acts as a pushing force so you don't have to push as much but because of the friction inside this tube and the inner diameter being a bit smaller than usual you will have to apply a little bit more force than usual otherwise it's just not going to connect together properly i think that's one of the reasons when people are trying this they're still applying a very light amount of force that they're applying with the original ptfe tubing but really have to give it a little bit more oomph, but not too much oomph, otherwise this lid is gonna pop open. So just as long as you have them perfectly lined in these filament channels, I'm gonna show you this entire process without editing so you can see exactly what I do and how you can replicate it. So you don't even need to put it into these side parts of the filament holder. You can if you want to, but up to you. So we place it into these channels. Perfectly there. And then we close the lid. And then we push gently, but not too gently. This is this is gonna take a bit of practice. You do have to actually provide, uh, put a little bit more force than you usually would with the PTFE tubes. You can even push it together a little bit more if you can see that there's a gap. Pressing it with your fingers seems to cool it off faster. And then give it a little blow. And then reveal, huzzah, another piece connected successfully. Just like that. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now you can either use a precision knife or a Stanley knife, or you can even use the cutting machine on the Sunlu device, which is cool. Place it in there. There you go. Push it down. Find the cut, and then off it comes. But you can use a Stanley knife if you want, or you can use this, up to you. So the trick to making these silicone tubes work is to cut a smaller piece to apply a little bit more force than you usually would when you are welding them together, and to cut them at a straight angle with scissors as opposed to your filament cutter. And hopefully you're gonna be on your way to welding filament like a pro. So I just wanted to do a test print after joining the filament with this method, but I didn't wanna use my P1S because that would make it too easy. So I used my highly problematic Ender 3 V3 KE, which nearly caught fire the other day, so that was fun. But this is the result. So here is the change of filament. You can see it's pretty damn perfect. 
There's no defects, there's no pockholes. It just looks like a perfect straight line. And now I have a strangely colored and shaped magic wand. The links to buy the silicone tube and the film connector will be below. Happy printing. Bye.